Hi. Hi, Julia. <laughs> Hi, how are you? It's so good to see you. So good to see you. All right, I'm going to turn off commenting and perfect. Now we can see each other very clearly. Yes. <laughs> this is my first time doing this. So I'm just like, it's I like I told you, I'm not great with technology. <laughs> it's also my first, so we'll get through it together, I hope. Yeah. <laughs> but thank you so much for doing it. And thank you so much for talking about Ozark, which I just finished. And I have a lot of questions. Yes. Um, but before we get into super spoilery territory, I will warn everyone not to, don't want to ruin anything for anyone, but mm -hmm. I just want to know, how are you doing? And I hope your family's healthy and safe and happy. Yeah, every, everyone is, uh, good. I mean, I think my, I'm not sure, my sister has a little bit of a, doesn't feel too well, but I feel like there's a lot of people with the virus and, you know, um, that, you know, they, they had symptoms. I mean, it's everywhere. So, you know, you can't really do anything about it. Um, but yeah, I, I, but you know, I'm, I'm in Los Angeles right now. So, and my parents, they live in a house, so they're not in the city in New York, but I know that, you know, I have friends in New York and New York's really bad right now. So I just, I hope every, but I just, I hope that there is going to be a, a vaccine very soon for everyone. <laughs> so, yeah. How are, how are you? We're good. Absolutely. Same thoughts and prayers to New York because they really just even being in a New York apartment alone can seem really. So that's why I'm glad we have people like you and we have content like Ozarks to hopefully give us a small distraction. Um, what are you yeah. watching to get you through the time? Um, Are you watching Ozark season three? Do you watch yourself? I did watch, I did watch Ozark season three. I actually, I might watch it because I usually like watching things twice just because I'm so nervous about <laughs> if I'm bad or not. <laughs> so like the first time I see it, I, I, you know, I just watch. I'm like, oh, I hope this is just at least passable. So, but I'm going to watch, I'm going to watch it now just as a, to enjoy it like an like an audience so um yeah but I you know I and I, I've been watching Tiger King I've, I've been watching Love is Blind do you think Carol did it I mean yeah maybe yeah <laughs> I, I yeah I mean it's kind of obvious <laughs> I mean listen memes there's a lot of Carol memes and memes are sometimes true there's 10% truth and jokes so do you think carol did it absolutely but i mean yeah. maybe. i don't know i don't know what to believe i don't know i i don't know what to i i'm there's gonna be a season two of there that show yeah there has to the stories they don't end i mean they're they're real life ozark people yeah i mean and i completely agree but also you said love is blind you're a fan did you finish yes Are you finished? oh yeah i finished i watched i watched the reunion i watched everything <laughs> favorite couple Oh, um, Cameron and Laura. Yeah, easy yeah. peasy. So, easy. but easy peasy. But I was really concerned because I was like, oh my God, are they going to break up at the end? And they didn't. But then I felt bad for Jessica at the reunion. <laughs> I, I, listen, I, I can go on about Love is Blind and about all these. This, I've been watching a lot of TV. A lot of TV. <laughs> a lot of Netflix TV. A lot of Netflix TV. A lot of Netflix, of course. Support the family. Of course. You know? Right. Yeah, support the brands. Always be on brand. Uh, yes. Okay, well then, my, I guess before we even get into the spoiler conversation, I wanted to congratulate you on winning an Emmy for this role. Which, Thank you. What was that like, being on stage in front of all your peers and being acknowledged in that way? Uh, it was crazy. It's crazy, because the Emmy's, like, literally right there. I can show can it. See it? Can we see it? Yeah. Oh, no, can, yeah. You can see it. I mean, how do you flip? I'm so bad. And you want to <gasps> know something funny. I was so bent. I didn't get it. So I didn't. I don't have my name on it, so it's just an Emmy. <laughs> so it's for everybody to know, this is the world's Emmy. It's not just my Emmy. Uh, yes. So yes, that I have no name on it. <laughs> I still have to get my name on it. <laughs> you gotta do. I feel like they'll hook you up though eventually. Yeah, but now I can. I'm not gonna do it during. <laughs> can you imagine? <laughs> <laughs> that would be that would yeah, be hilarious. Absolutely. It's like priorities, right? You're like it's a necessity. Yeah. Um, but you're not the only one who was honored. Uh, co, what? Well, your co-star, executive producer, and director, Jason Bateman, yes. also big, big win for him. It was a crazy night. I mean, 
first of all, we were all, I mean, Jason deserved to win, obviously, but all of us were so surprised because that year was like Game of Thrones last year and, and that show's so amazing and so iconic. And we were just like, oh, like, wait, wait, what? It was, <laughs> it was crazy. We're like, wait, this doesn't make any sense. But also like, it makes sense, but also doesn't. <laughs> but Jason, he's, he's, he's just, he's the best and he's, he's such a great director and I mean, he is the show and so is Laura and Laura was, is just so amazing. And it was just an amazing night. And it's, it's funny because that, that was on a Sunday, the Emmys were on a Sunday and the next day I flew, we all flew back to Atlanta um, on a Monday and then on Tuesday. So basically like the next day, Tuesday, I had like a 4am call time for we were still in the middle of shooting season three. And I had one of it was like, Laura and I had a huge scene. The scene. On Tuesday, the scene. Oh, we we're... had the scene, like the next day after the Emmys. So I was enjoying when I won, I was enjoying the Emmy. But like 45 minutes after I won, I was also concerned about the scene that I had. <laughs> to do on Tuesday so like I was enjoying it but like not really you know so I because I was thinking about you know the scene of the season pretty much right well you're yeah lucky. it's lucky that Jason Jason did a change at all I saw you guys put the meme on the slate oh that was there for like a month <laughs> that was there for a month it was on the and then we had to uh, you know, Jason's assistant this girl Taylor who's amazing we I love her she was like reenact the picture so we reenacted the picture it was really cute i'm glad you got to share that with us uh um, yeah okay so now just for the people watching i'm going to talk about spoilers so yes don't watch come back on variety.com we're going to post it there and come back when you're finished with season three but now is my time to talk about spoilers so let's unless if you don't mind spoilers unless but... you know good point yes good point good point all right so first question season three we see ruth she's fully business casual chic Nails done, the whole shebang. I feel like it's a physical and a mental transition here that's going mm -hmm. on. Tell me about this transformation. I think Ruth is trying to be something that she's not. Mm -hmm. And I think you mainly f kind of put those pieces together towards the end of the season when she gets down with Marty and Wendy. Um, but I think she just going into previously season two she's completely blocked what has happened to her in the past two years basically since marty and wendy came in the picture they completely taken over her life you know with her whole uncles with her dad i mean she does she also has no one left she ruined her whole family in a way because of the birds and she's trying to cling on to them in the beginning of the season and trying to be that businesswoman, that bird business type of person that she's not. So, you know, it's it's kind of sad because, like, Ruth, the fact that she's wearing a skirt is so not like her. Right. You know, the fact that she's wearing heels, but they're not really heels. They're heels for Ruth, but it's not like her. And I remember I was talking about it with the makeup artist. Um, she's amazing. Uh, Tracy, she... She was, we, we were just talking about it, like, how could we make a transformation even physically from like the end, from the beginning to the end? And I was like, well, what about the nails? You know, because na nails, it says, it sounds ridiculous, but your nails, it, it says a lot about like if with characters sometimes, like what she, she doesn't get her nails done at all in other seasons. But then in the beginning of the season, she might go to like CVS and get those press ons. You know, that, and it's still, it's like, she's trying to be all classy, but it's, it's still not uh, what she wants it to be, kind of. And then she comes back into her own roots in a way. And um, yeah, I think, I think, I, I, th but those, those are like, those, that's not the main thing. Those are just little details that right. I add kind of once I go to Atlanta, you know. You kind of slip. But into the Langmore twang there, right? There. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> is it hard not to fall into the accent when you're talking about her? Or is, is it like such a part of you now? Or is it pretty easy to keep it? It's such a part of me now that I can just kind of go 
in and out. Uh, but it's kind of funny because when I, I when I do the accent, when I'm in the middle of shooting anything and I have an accent, even when with my normal accent, I start like if I'm just saying there or I'll be like over there better like I'll start saying certain words <laughs> like her you know and I'm I was in the middle of doing a, a production now but then they had to call it off because of corona and um <clears throat> I you know I have I have a really thick accent in that too so I start you know having is, a little is it little an thing. Anna Delvey accent for chance yeah is, yeah could you could I hear what you think Anna sounds well you met her you know what she sounds like right yes yes and I have yes yes I know how she sounds like Oh it's crazy. It, it's crazy. It's like a thick German accent, isn't it? I don't know. It's okay. If I was ever, if there was a PhD in accents, this would be it <laughs> because it is. And I told her that I told her, I was like, you are gifted with languages, but if the accent, I, it's, it's a combination of German and Russian and English, but then also an, a European person living in America for a long try, time trying to sound American. So like it would have to be in the sense where people in America would think that she sounds European, but if she goes back home, people in Europe think that she sounds American. So it's just all over the place. Yeah, do they make dialect tapes for that? I don't even know. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I had, I had, um, I had like a dialect coach and the same dialect coach that I worked with on Ozark and she's great. Her name's Barbara Rubin. And um, so I, I worked with her on this, that, and uh, yeah, so that was just basically it, but it was, it was, it's crazy. It's crazy. Well, we will go back into maybe a little bit more socialite territory if we have time, but I want to keep going into Ozark and not, I'm so excited about that movie though. The, the socialite that swindled everybody in New York. <laughs> Cannot wait for that. Um, <clears throat> So you get a new, you also, your character gets a love interest, Ben, played yes. by Tom Humphrey. He, yes. What was that? What, first of all, why was Ruth ready for love this season? And tell me about getting to know Tom and finding that relationship there and, and like working through all the many layers of that relationship. Well, I mean, Tom is great and he's an amazing actor and we had so much fun on set. Uh, and he has like great sense of humor, which was so fun. And it was just so much an ease. Uh, but, and he's just fun to work with, but I think it was really important that Ruth had a love interest this year. I, I Because again, she's so alone this season that she just, I think when she met some, she just met somebody that loved her and she's not used to that. So she, in the beginning of the season, she kind of had a wall up with him. Like, why does this person love me? And she needed that. Because that love that she got, obviously, Wyatt is um, a different kind of love, but it's still love. You know, she wasn't having that rock and that love and that unconditional love that she used to have. And she got that from him. And she needed that. So I think that's why it was important in a way. And I also think that um, the thing that's different about this season more so than the other seasons is that Ruth is growing into a woman now. She's not so much, she is still a young girl. So when you see something that Marty or Wendy and they'll do something terrible or something terrible happens to her, you're still like, Oh, she's still young and she's still a young girl, but she's growing into becoming a woman in a way. Um, but I will say this season in a lot of ways was probably the hardest season because the, the thing that's so hard about television is that you have to be consistent, but not repetitive with a character, but you have to be consistent with a character. You have to make sure that they're growing, but not repeating the same thing from a previous season. So that was really hard because, you know, there's a softer side of Ruth that you see this season because there was a love interest. So I was worried. I was like, Oh, are people going to think like I've changed the character or that I'm not consistent with it, but I also don't want to be repetitive. So, you know, season three ha has its own, cha like own challenges, just like season one, which is finding the character in a way. Um, it, well, when I first 
well, obviously when I first started watching and they introduced it, both Ben and Frank Jr., I was like, oh, love triangle. Before we knew he was a psychopath and, you know, drove his dick off. But I really was like, uh-oh, love triangle for Ruth. And I was so relieved, but that's not what happened. Right. When you, do you get all the scripts at once? Or were you like, who's this Frank guy and why am I finding No. Him? We don't get the script. Like, they, no. Mm -mm. We get... <laughs> Welcome to the world of television. Um, let me tell you something. TV is the hardest thing. It really is. In terms of shooting, it's. I think it's harder than a movie. I've asked friends who've done theaters. It's harder than a play. Television is very, very hard. It's like boot camp. It's like when I did a movie, after I did a lot of TV, it's a lot easier because it's really hard. No, you don't get the, all the scripts at once because they're not done writing it. You know, they do rewrites all the time. But we get, we actually, for television, we don't get the script super last minute. They, you know, because Chris, Chris Mundy is like, he's such a gem and he's just such an amazing person. And he's so, he's the show, our showrunner. He's so, I, I love him so much. Um, but he doesn't give it to you last minute. And he also doesn't change things super last minute. Like he doesn't, sometimes shows change lines like, 20 minutes before and there'll be monologues and it's like I don't I, see that I never understand that I don't understand how they can expect actors to do amazing performances when you get lines that last minute because you can't it, it just it doesn't work at least for me mm -hmm. you know I always like you know having unless if something has to change in the script in terms of story wise and it's just dialogue it doesn't make any sense you so know. when they introduce Ben, you do know, like, this is someone she's going to fall head over heels for and mm -hmm. she's going to feel safe, and then they're going to rip all that away. They, do you well, know I plot? actually I actually knew, even during season two, that Ruth was going to have a love interest. Oh, so, cool. you know, I before they were even starting back up on the writer's room, you know, Chris told me that Ruth was going to have a love interest next, next season, and I knew that I was going to be related to Wendy and... You know, I, I, I'm sometimes in the new, but <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I would hope so. <laughs> I mean, I'm on the show. Um, yes, yes, but yeah. <laughs> um, there's a big fan theory going around that Ben's actually still alive. Do you believe in this fan theory? Where, where, where do you, where Wait, is what is this that? fan theory? Let yeah, me hear about you this. don't see it like you do with some other characters this season, uh, that there's a lot of hope that it's like not real and the whole thing's a ruse. Sorry, guys. Oh. I know. Trust me. Ruth is really sorry. <laughs> true. Very true. true. It, no. it, it's, it's hard watching. You have so many different layers this season, and it's so hard to watch her have mm -hmm. happiness and then have it all taken away. But it's so oh. worth it for that fight. Well, this is, I, this is the thing, and I feel like, to me, that is the most heartbreaking thing. And I think that's why it was so important having those happy moments and mm. Ruth smiling, actually, because she doesn't smile very often <laughs> sometimes. But I, because I just feel like when you have really happy times and then when something, not to get super dark on everybody, you know, watching this, but when you have really happy times and then something terrible happens, it makes it more heartbreaking in a way because you feel like you have this happy memory in a weird way even when you're watching it so you know and I I do that even with my acting like if I have an emotional scene and I have to think about something that makes me sad I don't just think about something that makes me sad that's it, it's I feel like great acting always has detail in it so I think about actually something or someone that makes me really happy and I have really happy memories with, and then they're gone. They're taken away. And that's even more sad rather than just the sad, you know? Yeah. So it's the same with also watching television, you know? Well, uh, excellent acting, acting tips from Emmy award-winning Julia Garner. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I don't know. I just, because I just feel like there's just something about details Oh, you're frozen for a second. Yeah, you froze a little bit too. We'll get to it. Let's come back. Thank you all for waiting. I'm back. Yay! <laughs> <laughs>
Okay, so I had a comment. I had a question for you. Yes. About another amazing character that we get to spend more time with and we get to see you interact with, Helen. That yes, is Janet is McTeer. Is she is she scary in real life? She is no. She she's is the love. She's the loveliest person. I love her. I love her. She's amazing. I I honestly I feel like it's like it, it, everybody on this show I love so much, and it's not just I mean such an you know such a fan of every single person and you know acting wise but just also just as human beings you know I mean our casting director Alexa Fogel who's amazing and I love her too she did an amazing job she's an amazing casting director and she just put such a good group together and also we were lucky that everybody's so nice you know and everybody's really like family on this job well, I'm curious. So one of my favorite scenes before we get to the Laura Linney moment was when you go to Helen's house and you're like, I quit, but I, 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 I don't hold any grudges. How is that possible? How does she not blame Helen for the death of Ben? Where's her head at there? Um, I mean, she blames Wendy. There you go. Yeah. So and I, I think, I think she has a weird respect for Helen. You know, I think she... I think she she never, even though, yeah, I don't know. I, I think they have this weird mutual respect that it's very different than with um, Wendy. Because, cool. you know, because I feel like Ruth kind of knows Wendy a little more for certain things because, you know, she's close with Marty. And, mm -hmm. you know, even though I don't want to give anything away, but that whole thing with her, that, had that you know with her with with uh I was about to say Laura but with Wendy at the end um she's she's angry at Wendy she's not angry at Marty she's do not. you think do you think Helen and Ruth would have worked well together because she was certainly open to it she wasn't hard to find to quote you yes I think she's open to it but I don't know how it would be because I feel like Ruth is best when she's her own boss you know, and um, Ruth has this thing where it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a thing that's, it's kind of a, a theme in her life where people kind of underestimate her in a way. And um, I can't, not that Helen wouldn't underestimate her, but I feel like a lot of people do. And then Ruth gets angry and Ruth's whole thing is that she feels ashamed. So she starts blaming and then she goes, like, she's very impulsive in a way. She doesn't think and then act on it. She acts and then she thinks. So she starts, she reacts before she thinks about what she's doing in a way. And I don't, I don't, I think her and Helen maybe are a little, they're very similar, but they're very different in that way. Whereas Helen's more controlled and less impulsive. I think Marty's probably the only one who doesn't underestimate Ruth on the regular and Ben to some extent, but up until this season, maybe he always maybe believed in her the most or no. Um, yes, yes. But then there's a lot of times where Ruth and Marty butt heads because he's like, True. no, Ruth, don't listen. You know, but I think, um, I think Marty listens to Ruth and I think he respects Ruth. And I think that's why Ruth loves Marty um, because she has never gotten that, especially from an older male figure because she's never gotten that from her dad. She's never gotten that from her uncles. She doesn't have a mother. She doesn't have a strong male figure or female figure she doesn't have a strong older figure. So the fact that he listens to her is, um, and I also think that Ruth knows how to be with men more than women. I think that's why sometimes she's more awkward with women like Wendy or Helen, rather than somebody like Marty or her father or Wyatt or, you know, <clears throat> Ben even, because she grew up in a house, she didn't have a woman in a house you know so there there's other there's a whole bunch of things about Ruth <laughs> oh she's a fascinating character yeah even when you when you describe her as awkward when you said when she's uncomfortable with someone or frustrated I immediately envisioned you kind of with what you do with your arms when you put them out to the side your whole body changes when you become her I'm just is that something that you were conscious of while you're doing it 
or is it something that just kind of naturally flows out of this? Well, <clears throat> I, you know, I try, so with me, I don't, people are, I don't try to, with the characters, I'm not like, oh, I'm going to like play this character like this and this and this. I don't view them like characters. I view them like people. You know, people are very specific. Again, it's detail. And when it comes down to physical body movement, like you don't have to completely transform your look in order to transform. You don't have to like change your appearance in order to transform. It can be as simple as even doing the walk. Like I don't walk like Ruth. Ruth walks in her own way. And Ruth doesn't walk like any of the other characters that I've played either, you know, but like other characters might do something with their hair or that Ruth doesn't, or, I mean, there's different, different things. And, and I kind of, <clears throat> I try, I find that before I go on set. So by the time that I'm on set, I'm kind of just, it's so ingrained. It's so in me that I can just kind of do whatever and get directed in whatever way the director wants to direct me. And then, you know, I don't have to think about those things, you know? Yeah. So let's talk about the scene, the fucking bitch wolf scene, because we can swear <laughs> this Instagram. Let's get so comfortable swearing. <laughs> bitch wolf. <laughs> uh, no, what was the, uh, this? So uh, she, oh yeah, you can curse on Instagram. It, the line was, you fucking bitch wolf. So uh, you fucking bitch wolf? Yeah. <laughs> Amazing. Thank you. Um, but it's, I heard it was four pages of dialogue. Is that correct? It might have been longer. It was a wow. very long scene. It was a so very what, long scene. When you get that, what do you think when you start reading this? I was so scared. Again, I want, like, the night of the Emmys, I was soup. I mean, I, like, so happy about the Emmy. Like, I can't even tell you. It was such an amazing night. But I was, like, 45 minutes after winning the <laughs> I mean, I just thought about the bitch wolf scene because, I, you know, it's a huge, it was a big scene. And it was kind of one of those scenes where I'm like, if the scene doesn't work, that's bad. That's that it is the scene of the season, at least for me. Um, <clears throat> so that was that was really big. It was very intimidating. It, it was just even on the page, but the writing is so good that all the beats were there. So it was one hand, it was super scary, but I always love that feeling whenever I'm super scared to do something. I'm also very excited to do it. Um, so there was like a part of me that was really scared, but then there was also a part of me that was like, I loved working on that scene just by myself doing the internal work. Like I loved working on that scene because it was, there was a lot of uh, fun. It's a fun material to work on, you know? Scared how? I'm curious. You seem pretty fearless. The last two seasons of, you've had to do a lot of big scenes as well. Oh, I, but I'm always scared. <laughs> I, you can ask any of my friends. I'm like, I'm that actor that literally thinks that this is my last job. No one will ever hire me. It is done from here. Like, that's why I'm saying I have to watch season two again, because I'm like, but nope, this is, nope, nope. <laughs> that's crazy. Tell me about shooting. How many days did it take you guys to shoot that scene? The bitch wolf scene? Yes. The, and as many times as you can say bitch wolf. It's bitch wolf? The bitch wolf? Um, one. one wow. Day. Was it a long day, I would assume? It was, it was a long Yes and no. We had, <clears throat> we rehearsed for quite a longer time than other scenes. Uh, but it wasn't that long because, you know, we rehearsed and we talked about it and we knew exactly what beats and like what line I would walk in. Like it was down to like what line I was going to storm in, when I was going to storm in, right. where I was going to stop next step then you say that line then i during whatever line i was going to lean down i leaned down to wendy and kind of talked to her and then the line that she was coming up to me so that was all that wasn't just like you know we just did that that was all kind of there in a way uh that we we were planning it when we were rehearsing it but then 
certain things that, you know, because technically we were planning on that, um, there were certain things that I kind of just did it on the take as, and I remember Alec, who's an amazing director. I love him so much. Then we ended up just doing that because then I just kind of, you know, you know, uh, Wendy, Laura was surprising me and I was surprising her and, you know, the, the slap on the table when I get really angry. That wasn't, I didn't like plan that when I was looking it over and reading it over in the script. I, you know, that was kind of just like on, on camera, you know, and I just also wanted to get a, a reaction from Laura and then Laura would do the same thing to me. She would do something to me that I would get in a reaction and then I would get even like angrier. I mean, it's, that's like my favorite kind of acting is when you, the actors surprise each other and then they surprise the director and they surprise everybody in Video Village in a way. Yeah, that was my follow-up. I want to know what it's like to fight with Laura Linney. It's... Oh, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's not, I, we were giving each other hugs at the end and it was so good. And then we were just walking to Crafty. So it was fine, <laughs> clearly. I love Laura so much. And, and I feel like, you know, she's just, I feel like I've just been getting so spoiled with her work because I, you know, I saw her play in New York a month or two ago and then I, I'm seeing this, her in Ozark this season and I just feel like I'm getting spoiled with the Laura Linney master class in a way and it's, it's so amazing. Well, Chris recently gave, like this week gave an interview, I think with EW and he said that if the fourth season, if they have one, which they're going to have one, uh, it, I cannot wait to see what happens, but it's going to be a lot about Ruth and whether or not she can create something on her own. And if that's sustainable, I'm curious, is that, do you like, um, what are your, what's your projection <clears throat> for Ruth season four? Um, I'm not quite sh I mean, I'm just going to go back to this. I feel like Ozark and it's not just about Ruth. Ozark to me is about identity and everybody is dealing with their own internal identity crisis in a way. And it's about identity and class. And when you have, you know, the class system, that's also linked to identity. Uh, I think Ruth is trying to rebuild her identity in a way. Um, so I feel like she, yeah, I think she's, I think she's trying to find her identity again because her identity was so much taken from her, from the birds, you know, I mean, her father, her parent was taken from the birds, you know, and, and to me, when, when your parents taken away, that's, it, or if you don't have, if you don't have a parent, it's like, it's very hard to have an identity. I feel like if you don't have an identity or you have an identity problem, it's very, very difficult. So I think it's just her regaining her identity and also her knowing that she's strong, that she's actually stronger without the birds and that she was kind of right the whole time in the beginning. You know, she has a very good instinct and intuition and she wasn't following her gut being with them. Do you feel like this is all driving or do you want it to be driving towards a Marty Ruth showdown? I think it's always going to be a Marty Ruth showdown. <laughs> But I think it's also going to be a, 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 a like a Wendy Ruth showdown too. It just was, but yeah, it's yes. not done. It's definitely not done. Do you think? Uh, I have a couple questions from fans. Not very much. Then we'll wrap this up. Thank you for being around and yeah, being no available problem. and talking to us about this. Um, I guess one of them's bouncing off. You were just talking about blocking the scene and the the lines of the scene, but you have so many great moments. Do you ever get to ad lib? was oh yeah on this oh, yeah? on this yeah yeah on this on this show you know again because chris is just he's he's the best monday chris monday our showrunner and and it's sometimes you know there's certain even as simple as you know i i will say doing an accent you know there can be certain lines that are super easy to to remember and to say and they just come out of your mouth really simple with just your accent. And, um, but then when you do an accent, like a roof accent, it doesn't come out for some reason. It's like, oh, this is hard to pronounce. 
And sometimes I'll be like, Chris, can I just change this? Like, it's hard to, he's like, yeah. He's like, why did I write that? No, let's, let's change it. What do you want to do? And he's just, he's, he's, but he's so flexible. But to be honest, we don't need to change any of the lines because the lines are, the dialogue's so good on Ozark. So, but uh, I don't know when in doubt, sometimes I'm just like, you know, I, I'm trying to think what, oh, Jason, Jason, I'll, I'll say a, a line that he, he, um, Jason sometimes makes lines up. He, Jason was the one this season who said, come get you some. <laughs> he, he was like, wow. and then, and then also Jason in season two, um, also did the lines, remember skinny bitch. Yes, I do. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Awesome. So he, so he's like, get, get you some. So he, he was the one who did get you some. But I could never think of the line, you know, fuck nugget mouth. Fuck I mean, nugget. that's, yeah, that's, that's the most iconic Ruth line, I, I think. I mean, I'm, yeah, that's, that's purely the writers. <laughs> that's, yeah, fuck nugget, that's the Emmy material right there, right? There. Yes. And the Snow White one was pretty good, too. I think there was, I don't see any dwarves around or something. Oh, yeah. I was like, it's Snow White, then I don't see fucking dwarves around. Yeah. <laughs> uh, one last question from fans and then we'll let you go. Thank you again. Uh, da, 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 da. Okay, what is the, if you could play any other character besides Ruth on Ozark, who would you want to play? I've never been asked that question before. That's a good question. Yeah. Um, Darlene. <sighs> okay. You gonna kill everybody? But I, uh, yeah, but I don't know. I don't know. That feels weird because Darlene wouldn't be Darlene if it wasn't Lisa Emery. Yes, she's so good. She is so scary and so good, but like also the sweetest person in real life. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, no. So actually, no, I wouldn't play anyone because everybody is perfect for who, you know, again, Alexa Fogel. She's a great casting director. Um, no, I don't know. I don't know who I would play. But but yeah, Darlene is a great great character. She's such a good character. We never really got to see him fight cuz they're Who who really would you good. who would you play? Darlene in a heartbeat. You would in a heartbeat, right? Still yeah. Husband buries him in her backyard. It's amazing. It's I mean, yeah. I mean, you have some pretty good lines make... too. Yeah. Everyone no, but Darlene, Darlene, Darlene. It's my just like took a minute to find it. Oh, that whole Felix, thing at the Felix at Navarro, the he's pretty sensational this year too. But yeah. Oh yeah, so scared. Everyone is so good. Everyone is so. And then ugh, Laura is amazing. Jason's amazing. Ben's amazing. Helen's amazing. You know, Aaron's amazing. Uh, they, Sophia Hewlett. I, I mean, all of them. Skyler is amazing. I mean, uh, Jonah. I, I'm calling them by their first names, but <laughs> yes, everyone is amazing. Everyone's amazing. And well, Maya, Maya's great too. She's really good. Yeah, she's really good. Well, Julia, so, thank you so much for your time. I've, you've thank gone you. way past what you said you would talk to us, so thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you for saying fuck nugget and bitch she wolf. I love fucking bitch wolf. This sorry. is uh, what happens on Instagram stays in, on, in Instagram. So, yes. <laughs> well, thank you so much and stay healthy. And I can't wait to see season four. Thank you so much. Take Bye. care. Bye, guys.